Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about dividend valuation methods. And this is something usually covered at the beginning of intermediate uh, financial courses at the college level. And it is a very important topic when valuing stocks. So there are four common dividend valuation methods, the dividend discount model, the constant perpetual growth model, the two stage growth model, and the non constant growth in the first stage procedure, which is essentially a mixture of the dividend discount model and the constant perpetual growth model. And so this is what we're going to be covering in the video and providing some examples for each of the formulas. So looking at the dividend discount model, it is a method of estimating the value of a stock as the present value of all expected future dividend payments. Payments. And essentially what it means is if you know what the company is going to pay in dividends throughout the following 5, 10, how many years you're going to consider, uh, you simply have to discount the uh, dividend in, at that future date uh, back to the present value, sum up all of the uh, discounted uh, dividends, and then that would be the value of your stock. So essentially, the model is assuming that the company is valued based on only its guaranteed income, which in this case is the dividend it uh, assures it will pay its shareholders. And so just a quick overview, the present value formula is a future value divided by one plus i, the interest rate, uh, squ squared to the power of uh, the that period. So in this case, you know, for uh, the dividend in the first year, it's one plus k to the power of one. And then the se second year dividend, it's one plus k to the power of two onwards. And so it is a tedious process and, and not really realistic. But for a lot of financial courses that provide you this information in the question, you simply discount all of the dividends to get the uh, value of the stock. So let's work through an example. Consider ABC Corp is expected to pay dividends of $10 a share, $12 a share, $14 a share, $17 a share, and $20 a share in the following five years. What is the present value of the stock? The discount rate is 15%. So let's first look at what the question has provided based on you know, the information that we need. So the discount rate K equals 15%. And then we have the dividends for year one, two, three, four, and five. So we input all of this information into the formula that was provided in the previous slide. And we can discount this down. And after calculations, we'll get all of the numbers. We sum them all up to get a value for the stock of $46.64 a share. Now for the constant perpetual growth model, it is a version of the div dividend discount model in which dividends grow forever at a constant rate. So instead of the question providing you uh, with the dividends that will be paid out in each of their respective years, it is assuming that the company will constantly increase the dividend at this respective growth rate for forever. And so this is this assumption can be made for extremely stable blue chip companies, you look at the Fords, you can look at maybe like the banking companies, financial service companies, where you know, they've guaranteed their shareholders that over the long term, uh, their dividend will continue to increase at a sustainable and consistent rate. And so this is the model that can be used to value those companies. And so essentially, the formula takes the dividend paid out in, in, in the base year, and multiplies it by one plus the growth rate, and then divides it by the discount rate minus the growth rate. And you can actually you simplify that formula to become the dividend in the next year divided by k minus g the discount rate minus the growth rate now an important rule for this formula is that the growth rate must be lower than the discount rate so g must be lower than k and you can actually look at this just think about it if g was higher than k then the um, the uh, dividend would be divided by a negative number which wouldn't make sense because the company would be valued at a negative value and that just says that the company is worthless, which isn't true. In addition, if the value was the same as a discount rate, then you'd be dividing by zero, which you can't do. And essentially, the value would be undefined. So let's take a look at an example. If ABC Corp recently paid a dividend of 8%, and it is expected to grow at a constant rate of 10%, what is the value of the stock? The discount rate is 20%. So once again, let's identify the variables that were provided in the question. So K is 20%, the growth rate is 10%, and D, uh, the base year dividend is $8 a share. And now we can use the formula that was provided in the previous uh, slide. We input the, these values, so we put uh, 8 into D, then 1 plus uh, 0.1, which is 1.1, and then divided by 0 0.2 minus 0 0.10 to get a uh, present value or value for the stock of $88 a share. Very simple, 
for these, as long as you identify the, the numbers and the variables provided in the question, using the formula is very simple. Now a more complex example, and this is really where a lot of students kind of struggle with, is these two-stage dividend growth model. And this is a dividend model that assumes a firm will temporarily grow at a different rate from its long-term growth rate. So say for example, if ABC Corp is expected to grow its dividend by 20% in the following three years, and then by 12% after, how can we value this stock? So just to illustrate this example, because some students kind of don't understand what, what that means. So the way it's different from the constant perpetual growth model is that there are two dividend uh, growth rates instead of one. So from year zero to three, G would be 20%, so 0 0.2. And then from year four onwards, G would be 0.12% or 12%. So you'd actually have two G variables, G1, which is 20%, and G2, which is 12%. Now the formula is right over here. And and this can this is a little confusing and I remember when I first saw this formula I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to remember this." And while some professors may provide you with a crib sheet which, you know, you can refer to and then just simply input the values, if you don't have a crib sheet, I suggest that, you know, practice makes perfect in the end. Like you'd have to go through many, many examples provided in the textbook and just to work and eventually you'll remember this formula. And so Looking at the formula, there are the, the G variables are identified. So G1 is the growth rate for the first stage, and G2 is the growth rate for the second stage. So essentially, these two different phases. Then K is, as always, the discount rate. And now there's we introduce a new variable, which is T. And so that is the date where the dividend growth rate changes from G1 to G2. So if the growth rate is expected to continue in the first stage for three years, then T would be three. And while uh, we, we have the same rule about the growth rate for G2, so G2 is uh, must always be less than uh, the discount rate. However, for G1, G1 can be above or equal to the discount rate. It does not matter. So that is a very important distinction. So just remember that. So let's take a look at an example using the formula. ABC Corp was paying a dividend of 72 cents a share, and analysts forecasted five-year growth rates of 11% for ABC Corp and 11.25% for the industry. Assume that after five years, the growth rate for ABC Corp's dividend will revert to the industry uh, projection. The discount rate is 14%. What is the stock's value? So we know that for the first five years, ABC Corp will grow its dividend by 11%, as industry analysts have projected. And then after five years, the uh, the dividend will grow by 11.25%. So let's identify as always the values that are provided in the question, which are K is 14%, G1 would be 11%, G2 11.25%. The dividend in the base year, which was the most recent dividend paid is 72 cents a share. And T would be five, because after five years, the dividend will refer to the industry average. We then pull our super tedious formula. We input these variables into the formula as indicated over here. Just remember that T is five and five. So that's really important because that will be essentially like if you were to look at this formula, you can actually see that this is the constant perpetual growth formula using the G, uh, G1 uh, growth rate. And this is the constant perpetual growth formula using the G2 uh, growth rate. So this is really the important one which separates and then combines the two. So your T variable is very important. You really want to identify that in the question. Once you've gone through the formula and you've inputted all the variables, in this respective example, the value of the stock would be $28.81 a share. So finally, the non-constant growth in the first stage is there's there's no formula for it. It's rather just a procedure where you combine the dividend discount model and the constant perpetual growth model. And so let's take a look at an example using these two procedures. Suppose ABC Corp is expected to pay a dividend of $1 a share, $2 a share, and $2.50 a share for the next three years. After the third year, it will grow at a constant rate of 5%. The discount rate is 10%. What is the stock worth today? So essentially, after year three, it is a constant perpetual growth rate question. We just input the, the values, uh, the year three dividend into the constant perpetual growth model, and then we get the value. But at the same time, in the first three years, the dividend grew at a different uh, growth rate. So we would have to discount this individually 
and then combine the two values to get the actual value of the stock. So I, let's identify the variables provided in the question. D1, the dividend in the first year would be $1. D2 would be $2. D3 would be $2.50. The discount rate is 10%, and the growth rate from dividend 3 onwards is 5%. So combining two procedures, let's conduct the dividend discount model first. So we would uh, take the uh, dividend for year one, year two, and year three, discount them using the present value formula identified at the beginning of the video to get a sum of $4.44 a share. Then for the constant perpetual growth model, we would take D3 onwards. So we'd put 2.5 into the formula, take our growth rate and our discount model, same procedure we did for constant perpetual growth model to get a value of $52.50 a share. Now, a quick caution here. A lot of students, what they'll do after they do these two procedures is then they would just add these two numbers together to get the uh, value of the stock. That's incorrect. So as you can see here, this is the value, the present value of the, those three dividends. So this is correct, but you'll see that this is actually the present value in year three for that dividend using the constant perpetual growth rate. So we'd actually have to discount this once again, discount this $52.50 uh, a share number once again to bring it back to the base year. So doing so, we take our $44.44 plus the discounted uh, value of $52.50 to get a stock of $43.88 a share. That is the actual value. And so a lot of students, they'll remember to merge the two procedures, but then they'll forget to actually discount this value back to the present value. Because this is in year three, you need to get it back to the base year of year zero. So a quick overview, the four methods used to, to value a stock that pays a dividend are the dividend discount model, the constant perpetual growth model, the two-stage growth model, and the non-constant growth in the first stage. And a quick side note, I wanna talk about the discount rate, the K variable. In another video, I'll be covering the G variable, the growth rate variable, because that's a very important consideration. But looking at the K variable, where does the K variable come from? Just a quick uh, kind of like reminder, the capital asset pricing model, which is uh, essentially illustrates the relationship between risks and return, the higher your risk, the higher your return is, it takes the it combines the risk free rate plus the stocks beta plus the stock market premium. And it provides that uh, that expected return, or in this case, it'd be the discount rate used in your dividend discount model. So that's where the K variable comes from. In another video, once again, I'll talk about the G variable and kind of go in depth on that one. So for the bonus questions today, we have two. The first one, suppose dividends for ABC Corp are projected to grow at 6% forever. If the discount rate is 16% and the current dividend is $2 a share, what is the value of the stock? Okay. And the second question, suppose XYZ Corp, Corp's dividend grows at 20% for the next three years. Thereafter, it grows at a 12% rate. What is the stock valued at, assuming a 15% discount rate and the most recent $3 dividend? So we've covered four different methods, four dividend discount methods that you can use. And there are two questions. So based on these questions and based on the information provided, you, you need to first identify which of the formulas you need to use, which of the procedures you need to follow. And then once you find the answers, comment and share them below in the comment section. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to reply to your, to your question. And please, of course, like and subscribe my channel. I really enjoy making these videos and I wanna make sure that I receive positive feedback from you guys so I can make more and more and help you guys out. You guys have a great day. See ya.